Okay, well, hello and welcome back to training number two. Uh, I'm your host, Dr. Zachary Cool, once again, and today we're going to be breaking down a test called a comprehensive stool analysis. So we're going to be looking at some gut markers and how our digestive function, how our gut health uh, intricately relates back to our thyroid health and overall health of the body too. So um, we're going to be, actually, this is going to be a case study where if you look here, the name's been erased, but this was a 50-year-old female patient of mine where when she first came in, she had severe thyroid problems uh, to the point where she was on, her, her TSH level was, was an 11, meaning if it shouldn't be above three, and that's an 11, uh, through the roof for her TSH, meaning it's just her, her brain is yelling at her thyroid, but it's really not working. And she was on multiple thyroid medications. So from Synthroid to WP Thyroid to Armor Thyroid to Natural natural thyroid, all the different meds for her thyroid by multiple different doctors, and yet she still had no metabolism. She was still significantly overweight, couldn't lose any weight. Um, her energy was, was really down. Her, she, she, her number one thing coming to me was it wasn't for weight loss or for really anything else other than just her energy was so bad. And so one of the things I do with every patient, uh, especially autoimmune patients or thyroid patients and any hormone imbalance, is look at what the gut's doing. And so this test shows us in black and white what's going on with the gut because our gut function relates to so much of our overall health. And so one of the things that I, as, we, as I went through the consult, the initial consultation with this lady, she said that she was going to the bathroom. She had diarrhea almost eight to 10 times per day. So a major red flag that all of her doctors had missed. And I told her, look, your, your gut health, this is the reason why you don't feel right. If we, if we fix your gut, everything else will then fall in line. And so she had been to multiple doctors. She had been put on multiple rounds of antibiotics too, which is another uh, clinical marker that something is wrong inside the gut. Because every time we take an antibiotic, the way that works is it wipes out all the healthy bacteria levels in your gut along with the bad bacteria levels too. So I always use the analogy, uh, an antibiotic is like throwing a bomb inside a room full of rats. Yeah, you're gonna kill all the rats, but what's left of the room after that point too? So it, it utterly destroys our immune system. And then when we find clients who've had multiple rounds of antibiotics, usually th those are people who have severe gut problems, autoimmune disorders, food intolerances, allergies, all, all that type of stuff. And our gut health relates so much to our overall health. And there's two key markers I always look at with patients when we look at uh, evaluating gut health. And that's number one, what is your gut lining like? So our gut lining would be the intestinal lining uh, of our intestines. Basically, if you've ever heard of the term leaky gut, it means that that protective wall of our intestines that allows nutrients and vitamins and minerals to pass through into our bloodstream, but keeps toxins and pathogens and things like uh, food particles like gluten from crossing through, that's our gut wall's job is to act as a fishing net. Uh, the, to catch the things that aren't supposed to cross through, but allow the smaller things to sift through. Well, in leaky gut, first of all, that, that mechanism's been damaged. Now there's things crossing through into the bloodstream that are not supposed to be there. And so we can look at infl inflammation markers in the gut and evaluate if that's happening. Uh, the second thing, and where if you look at the top of this test, this is where we're going to start today. After we evaluate, uh, that's the first key marker of gut health is what is your gut lining like? The next key marker of gut health is what is your internal environment like? Meaning, what are your healthy bacteria levels like? Do you have any bad bacteria overgrowth? What is your mic? What's the health of your microbiome? And your microbiome as a whole involves the healthy bacteria, small levels of yeast, fungus, all these different things that need to cohabitate uh, in your gut and not cause problems with each other. Meaning, we can't have any bad bacteria overgrowth, any fungus overgrowth, any yeast overgrowth. We want to see beneficial bacteria being the predominant bacteria in the gut for you to have a good internal gut environment. So starting at the top here, let's look at these three different categories where we see the, the first category is the expected or the beneficial flora. And flora is just a, just a term for gut bacteria. And so there are over 2,000 different strains of gut bacteria that we know of. Um, there are some that we know are more important than others. So some of these are the more important gut bacteria groups that we need to be dominant inside of our digestive tract. And so if we see here in the green... Uh, these are the good bacteria levels, and we want all of these to be a plus three or a plus four. That means there's abundant growth. And if it's a one or a two or even a zero or like a no growth detected here as, with, as what this NG stands for, well, hey, that's a big problem because these healthy bacteria levels will keep yeast from overgrowing, will keep fungus from overgrowing, will keep 
uh, even bad bacteria levels, which aren't always bad. I mean, E. coli, we need to have in our gut, but it shouldn't be allowed to, to grow abundantly and cause an imbalance. So what these good bacteria levels do is they keep that in check. If we look at commensal bacteria, this we're told, if you look at the description down here, this is neither good nor bad. But the problem is when we don't have enough good bacteria, some of these kind of neutral bacteria can begin to grow more than they should and get a foothold in our gut. And so this can cause problems uh, as far as uh, outward digestive symptoms. You might have uh, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, you might have periods of constipation, diarrhea, or you even may be asymptomatic. And that's what so many people are. But the third category over here, and this was what was causing so many problems in my client. Uh, if you see plus four Citrobacter fraundi complex, and what this is, if you read about this in the test as we go down here uh, through these pages, you can pause and read about this. This causes major gut disruption. It's a cause of diarrhea. It, it causes the, the inability to digest and break down food, absorb the nutrients correctly. So this was her main problem, uh, the plus four dysbiotic bacteria. And, and dysbiotic can mean, number one, it could be an overgrowth of bad bacteria, or it can be bacteria that's now growing in a part of the gut where it's not supposed to. So understand that most bacteria, this is supposed to be growing in our colon. That's where the, the final breakdown and the fermentation of certain foods occur and absorption of additional nutrients. And then what happens is if these bacteria, if our small intestine is unhealthy and the, the pH balance is unhealthy and now these bacteria can begin to grow into the small intestine, well, that can be dysbiotic too. And it's also, it's also called SIBO which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And so she had a combination of both those going on. Bacteria growing in a part of the gut where it's not supposed to be, and also an overgrowth of a dysbiotic bacteria in her gut that was causing so many of her uh, digestive symptoms and ultimately down the road, her thyroid symptoms too. Because let's break this down one more, uh, a little bit more before we move on from this. Your bacteria in your gut, they don't just break down food. All these healthy bacteria levels, we're finding out more and more, they communicate with the cells in your body. So they influence cellular function. They influence hormone production. Uh, we're finding out more and more that every organ system in our gut needs certain types of bacteria cultures to function properly. These, these aid in the absorption and even the production of certain vitamins and minerals. Um, the major role in your immune system. I mean, 70 to 85% of your immune system is located in the gut. Um, brain neurotransmitters, serotonin, dopamine, some of these uh, uh, brain chemicals that we need to have a, a healthy attitude and mindset are produced by these gut bacteria. So if we see that we don't have enough good and the bad's overgrowing, it's not just that we're not digesting food or we can relate that to our to our outright gut problems like diarrhea or constipation or IBS. No, these play major roles in how the overall function of your body uh, is number one functioning and how well and how healthy you are too. Okay, so as we move down here, the bacteria was the first section. Now we're going to go down into the yeast section. And so if we look at yeast, again, there should be normal yeast, which we don't really see any growth of that or dysbiotic flora, an overgrowth of, of a yeast called Candida albicans. And if you're a woman watching this and you've ever been diagnosed with Candida before, this is what that diagnosis means. It can be an overgrowth in the gut, and once that becomes so compromised, you can start having it grow in other parts of the body. Um, so if we look down here, even under, they, they do a visual inspection and a microscopic ins inspection. And so the microscopic in, uh, inspection of the yeast there should be none or rare, meaning very small amounts of yeast in our digestive tract. This patient had many. And so again, if, you, if you're a person who's had yeast overgrowth or yeast infections, uh, go back, think about your history, go back in your medical records. I'm willing to bet that you've had multiple rounds of antibiotics that have just beat down these healthy bacteria levels, and now the yeast has been allowed to grow. And if that is your case too, if you've had this test done and you're taking a probiotic and it's not changing a whole lot, there's a reason for that. Uh, most of the probiotics on the market today contain maybe 10, 20 different strains of bacteria at the most, and they contain billions of bacteria cultures, which may sound like a ton. But again, what did I say in the beginning? We know of over 2,000 different strains of bacteria, and so we're not by taking a probiotic, we're not getting near enough of the uh, abundance of the strains. And then from a sheer quantity of bacteria standpoint, you know, if you're getting 500 billion, that sounds like a ton. But your gut needs trillions and trillions. And the difference between trillions and billions 
is the difference to put this in the context. That's the same difference between millions and thousands. So we get these trillions in the diversity of the healthy gut bacteria from eating ancient foods that our forefathers and ancestors used to eat. Fermented foods like kimchi, kefir, kombucha, raw sauerkraut, apple cider vinegar, uh, these different raw cheeses and yogurts that uh, when we get these into our diet in the, in the purest forms, meaning if you go to your regular grocery store and find it, uh, it's probably not the best form for you. You got to sometimes go to specialty stores or learn how to make these foods yourself at home to begin re-inoculating your gut with a healthy bacteria that will beat down the, the, the candida again and also begin to beat down some of these bad bacteria overgrowths and get them back into alignment again. All right, moving down. So if we look at the test, this test also tests for the presence of, of parasites in the gut. This, per, this person, is, we do two different gut samples over the course of two days. Uh, so actually four different vials that a person fills up from this take-home test. Uh, so this will test for ova or parasites in two different tests. You can see that both of these were none for that, which is good because her blood work was elevated in a white blood cell called eosinophils. And so if you've had your blood work done and they did a white blood cell panel and you see that eosinophils are raised up, well, that can be a blood marker that you have parasites or it can be a blood marker that you just have real bad food intolerances and food allergies too. So uh, thankfully that was the case in hers. It was the food-based uh, allergies that were raising up her eosinophils, no parasites in either sample here. But again, you can see many yeasts. So the yeast overgrowth causes so many uh, problems. And it's, it's almost every case of autoimmune disease. If you're watching this right now and you have Graves or Hashimoto's uh, thyroid disease, almost every case of autoimmune disease has an abundance of yeast growing in the gut. So one of the main things needs that needs addressed with autoimmune disease cases. All right, if we move down here and keep going, um, they're gonna test for different amino assays, the DNA presence of some of these uh, bad bacteria growths in the gut, negative for her in each one of those cases. And then there will be different categories that we'll go through where there's a whole category devoted to digestion, digestion and absorption markers. And so you see one good thing for her test is that all these were in the normal range. And this is what we want. If we find that you're not breaking down fat and there's a presence of that in the stool or muscle fibers, if you're not breaking down protein, vegetable and carb fibers, then this can give us indication as to, first of all, the, the function of your pancreas and are you secreting enough good digestive enzymes? And if not, maybe a short-term supplementation with digestive enzymes to more thoroughly break down your food. The next level that we see here is inflammation markers. And so inflammation in the gut, this isn't just uh, cellular inflammation like we talked about in the blood last time, but a lot of the times we'll see patients that have inflammation markers in the gut. Again, according to her test here, all these are within the normal range, so that's good to see. Uh, if we see these things like lysozyme or calprotectin or, or lactoferrin, uh, these can be inflammatory markers that will indicate a person that has IBD. And so irritable bowel disease is different than irritable bowel syndrome. IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, means that a person can have periods of constipation or diarrhea, and so that's the beginning clinical signs that something is wrong or something is amiss in the gut. If that continues on and some of these inflammatory markers in the gut get triggered, irritable bowel disease means that a person now has Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, and these markers would be indicative of a person who has an autoimmune type of inflammatory gut disease. All right, if we go down here a little bit more, secretory IgA. If you've heard of IgG, IgA, IgM, these are different immune markers uh, in the body and in the gut that will give us an indication as to what the immune system is doing inside the body. And so if you look at IgA, you could tell this in her case is well, well outside of the normal limits of 51 to 204. So it's more than double at 475. So her immune system was just working way in overdrive inside of her gut here. And what, what was the reason for that? Well, number one, her immune system is attacking the bad bacteria overgrowth and it's attacking the abundance of yeast overgrowth too. So when you get both of those back under control, the immune system can take a breath, can calm back down again and not have to be so, uh, so triggered to begin attacking those things once they're wiped out of the gut again. All right, coming down here, short chain fatty acids. This will give us an indication if you're breaking down your fats correctly and if, you, if your cells, the, even, even your, your bacteria play a role in producing essential fatty acids too. So all these are in line with her. The next, carry, uh, next category down here, intestinal health markers. You know, red blood cells, none, good thing, no, no blood in the stool, but pH. And this is important because you need to have a, a, a good pH in, in the intestinal, 
internal, excuse me, environment of your gut. And we can tell that hers isn't down in the dumps, but it is slightly lower than we'd like it to be here. So again, an indication that just the internal environment of her gut, not just the bacteria, but her microbiome in general, in general uh, not a healthy atmosphere, not a healthy place for healthy bacteria to be thriving. Um, loose watery stool, definitely not normal. Uh, a, a, a side effect of having the, the diarrhea that she has every single day. And then if we get down here, Based upon what your gut levels show as far as your bacteria levels and as far as your um, yeast, can, yeast candida levels in the gut, you'll get a graph as far as natural herbs and natural products you can use that, that will be most effective at, at helping to, to neutralize or to eliminate some of this bad bacteria or yeast overgrowth. And so most cases, you know, I'll go off of this. I'll see that, okay, oregano acid is not going to work with this client. Berberine is not going to work. But, hey, caprylic acid is in the, in the moderate zone that may work. Grapefruit seed extract and silver will be great at helping to neutralize some of these bad bacteria overgrowth and begin to take these things out naturally. Um, same with the yeast. If we come down here, I mean, the same, you can tell that she's going to be reactive to a lot of these different natural agents that can help get the yeast under control. But these can take kind of a long time. Even with dietary changes, it's not something that happens overnight. And so with her case, and this isn't something I do with everybody, with her case, because of the severity and how many bowel movements she was having, having per day, uh, because she had inflammatory bowel movements, because of, of just how bad her energy was, well, short term, we can do something that's a little more effective. And so I'm, I'm, my, my stance is always to go the more natural route when we have time to do this. But in her case, you know, nystatin is a, is a medical grade antifungal that you can use to knock things out quickly. And so we sent this test to her medical doctor. I don't have the ability to prescribe nystatin. We sent this test to her medical doctor. Her medical doctor looked at it and right away prescribed nystatin because of number one, how sensitive she was to it. And number two, how quickly this would work in her system. And so we used the nystatin initially. Uh, with, with, within the end of that prescription, her diarrhea had stopped. No more gut problems as far as that was concerned. Then through the dietary changes, through cleansing the body, doing an intense detox, an intensive detox, and then supp supplying her body with some of these natural antifungals and antiseptics, now her bloating went down. Now her metabolism was able to normalize. Her digestion didn't just stop with the diarrhea, but she was absorbing her food better too. And uh, the nutrients we were giving her were repairing her gut lining so she didn't have any, any of the leaky gut and no more of the inflammation markers too. So there is a time in a case where if we need something to, to go down quickly, if it's an urgent matter, we can use something like the Nystat. And if, you, if your doctor is able to prescribe that, then hey, it's something that we can use quickly to, to kind of get some of these bacteria levels into a range where now your natural immunity can take over. All right. Other than that, when you look at these tests, you know, the, the, the Great Plains Labs that I use also uses a company called Doctors Data. So you're looking at two different labs evaluation of every single one of these markers. And you get a comprehensive review of each one of these markers, too, that will give you an indication of what this means to your health and the steps needed to begin eradicating some of this dysbiotic bacteria the yeast overgrowth, and to begin to normalize that. So we use this test almost with every patient, especially thyroid or autoimmune cases, to come in here and quickly evaluate what's the health of the gut, what steps need taken immediately. This will curtail some of the dietary changes that we make and uh, possibly even make, a, make the elimination diet even more strict up front. Um, but ultimately, once we fix the gut, once th this is the very first step, once we fix the gut, so many other things and your health will begin to change. And it's not just taking more Synthroid or more Thyroid. When you fix the gut, because ultimately what happens here too, we said that T4 conversion to into T3 happens in the gut. So uh, even from a thyroid standpoint, if that conversion process isn't taking place, just by fixing the gut alone, so many of these markers begin to normalize and so many of your, of your health uh, hormone production down the road begins to balance itself out. It's not that you need more medication at that time. You usually can take less because the, uh, because the body's working uh, the way that it's supposed to at that point. So I hope this test helps. Um, this case study was helpful. Uh, at the end of, of, her, of her care plan here, no more diarrhea. Her TSH levels went down to normal again. And no more bloating. She was able to lose about 40 pounds in the program during her three, three or four months. I forget quite how long working with us here. But it, none of that changed. Doctor after doctor, none of that changed until she was able to fix her gut. So uh, if you're having problems, evaluate this test. And hey, if you'd like to have a personal health consultation, click the button below this video. We'll be happy to get you set up for a time and day that works good for you that we can sit down and talk about your health and, and talk about if this would be a good test 
to have RAM for you too. So thanks a lot. Talk to you soon.